Some of you may know I worked at Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for 20 years, actually, before coming to England. I really focused in diabetes epidemiology. And I have to say that this pandemic year of COVID-19, in addition to having a huge impact on life like it has all of us, this has had a um, really unexpected and dramatic impact upon the way we do our work and our outlook for epidemiology and its role with diabetes. Um, first of all, it's raised the profile of what we do in epidemiology and public health in a major way. For years, I, when I would travel on an airplane and talk with the person next to me and ask, and they'd ask me what I do. And I early on would, would say, well, I'm an epidemiologist, but I got tired of explaining that, no, I'm not a skin doctor. Um, after a while, I started to just say, well, I'm a health scientist. Well, those days are over. Now people know what epidemiologists are. They, they know what public health is about. Um, and I think that the importance and the interest in what we do is, um, has raised a whole lot. So this pandemic is also going to create new demands on, and changes in the way we do things, I think. And in the past, we often had a two or three year time horizon in doing studies to try to influence decisions. And part of that's a function of chronic conditions. But I think we've learned from this where the demands to make decisions about what to do out in the public were almost immediate. Um, and to use to, to get data to help with those decisions very quickly is going to is going to be a requirement in the future continuously for for pan, for COVID nineteen. But I think the expectation is going to be there for other conditions as well. So that's going to affect us. It's also going to require us to use available real world data in ways that we haven't in, in the past. And in the past, we often would set up surveys or develop trials or interventions. And those will, are still, of course, very important, but the ability to find, integrate, and use data out there very quickly and bring it in to help us make decisions in a short period of time is, is going to raise, is, it's going to increase as well. In terms of the way this has influenced what we've seen for diabetes and COVID-19, this has been really profound as well. And I think that we saw within a a month of the pandemic, the diabetes had an important role. Now that we're 18 months in, we've seen a number of things that, first of all, it's clear that diabetes has is one of the core factors driving poor outcomes in, um, in people who have COVID-19 infection. A person with diabetes is more than twice, um, more than twofold likely to be hospitalized. If they're hospitalized, their risk of death is about 25%. It's, in, it's two to threefold higher than person without diabetes and um, 20 to 40% end up in intensive care. And those are just what we know from data during that, that month of a hospitalization when it's measured. There's, there are other repeated hospitalizations and other aspects on morbidity that we don't have good data on. One of the most ominous findings has been that the overall mortality rates among people with diabetes is 50% higher than in previous years. Now that's in comparison with the general population where we see that the COVID-19 pandemic has been really damaging as well. It's had a 20% increase, but this, this essentially amounts to two and a half times that impact for people for the population with diabetes compared to those in the general population. And this is a reflection of the, of the impact that COVID-19 can have um, in terms of increasing that risk for hospitalization, but then once they are, that the risk for, for further morbidity and mortality is also increased. On the one hand, the proliferation of data in such a short period of time has been truly amazing. The number of studies published, it's, it's, it can be a bit overwhelming at times. But when we look at the epidemiology of diabetes and COVID-19, it's actually been a bit narrow and a bit focused on what happens from the point of hospitalization on. And for us to really get a handle on reducing the damage to the population with diabetes, we actually need to broaden that view quite a bit. We need to understand how diabetes influences risk of transmission in the first place or, or infection in the first place, how it influences the degree of morbidity or the severity, and particularly how the indirect impacts of the pandemic are affected and how they influence the population with diabetes. For example, how are behaviors affected? How is, how is care? How are complications affected? 
Um, how is the deferral of health services that has happened um, influencing things like diagnosis and occurrence of other conditions? And there might be some unintended benefits of the pandemic that are occurring too through changes in care or maybe even changes in behavior that affect some segments of the population in positive ways. Um, we don't know, but those are gonna be the questions that are really important to study um, using diverse data sources in, in, the, in, the, um, in the year to come. 18 months ago, when we, it was apparent that we were confronted by a global pandemic, I think we, many of us had a optimism that this would be a short period of time that we would have to tackle and then we would be done with. And although some countries in the world are now seeing encouraging rates, rates of vaccination that make the future look better, it's also apparent that we have a long ways to go and that the importance of epidemiology in influencing how we prevent, treat COVID-19 in populations with and without diabetes is only gonna actually grow in the years to come. So we're, we have a lot left to do and a lot left to learn.